Hi guys, the objective for this video is to figure out what goes in the outside of this circle. All of these coordinates, what are these coordinates? And the method that we're going to do to use to find these is using these little paper cutouts. So you need to have this paper in front of you. You also should have this paper in front of you. Um, in fact, it would be best if you could print this out and follow these instructions before we get started today. Um, let me show you some things of, that's going to help you with this. So when you print this out and you follow these instructions, here's what you're going to do. You're going to color them in. Um, the Whatever colors you want to use, I use yellow, blue, and pink. The pink ones actually need to be colored on the back, not on the front. Um, then once you color them, you're going to cut them out. When you cut them out, every hypotenuse has a length of one. So each hypotenuse is going to have a length of one. Then we're going to fill in the other two sides, the legs, and on the 45 90s, they're all going to be radical 2 over 2. So I only marked this one, but all of them are going to be radical 2 over 2. And the 30 60 90s, I've got this one marked here. For the 30 60 90s, we're going to have the 1 half on the short leg, we're going to have the radical 3 over 2 on the long leg. And that's going to be the same for both the blue and the pink where they're going to have a one half on the short leg and a radical three over two on the long leg. Um, the orientation though, mm, it, it might help if you wait till you get them on the cir circle to mark them that way. And what I mean by get them on the circle, once you get them cut out, you then put them on the circle like this and look how the hypotenuse is matching up with the radius of the circle and the leg lies flat on the x-axis. So it's like, that's the one I started with. And then all, I'm gonna say the points, of course they're all points, but they all kind of point towards the origin. That is, the hypotenuse is here, the x-axis is here, the flat side is over here and over here, and then they make this kind of x shape. That's how the 45, 45, 90s are going to go, or yeah, the 45, 45, 90s. Let's take a look at the 30, 60, 90s. I don't have a picture of all of the 30, 60, 90s, but this one, for instance, see how the hypotenuse is here on the radius, the long leg is on the um, x-axis, and then it's kind of pointing towards the middle like that. And so you'll put all three of the pink ones here together so that they, again, make kind of this butterfly shape, and then you can write on them so that they're written on right side up and not upside down. If you have them both on there at the same time, then you can see the long leg, the radical three over two, is here on the x-axis. The one half is pointing up, the hypotenuse is the one. And on the other triangle, the one half is here, the radical three over two is my long leg going all the way up here, and then my 60 degree, in this case, down here at the corner. If you have them all three on the same side at the same time, this is what they look like. Okay, now let's talk about what do we do with this? Why are we doing this? How does this help us? Well, like I said, we need to fill in all of these coordinates on the outside, and we don't know what they are. Let me back up a minute and tell you even what I'm doing here. All right, so at the top of the paper, we learned this last time, but remember, if, the, if this is a triangle with a hypotenuse of 1, if this is a 45, 45, 90, then if this is a 1, this is 1 divided by radical 2. And of course, we have to multiply by radical 2 over radical 2, and that gives us a radical 2 over 2 for the leg. So both of these legs are radical 2 over 2. We learned about the 30, 60, 90s, that the, if the hypotenuse is 1, then the short side is 1 half, and the long side is radical 3 times that size. So this is a 1, a 1 half, and a radical 3 over 2. This is the same triangle, it's just sitting on its side, and so now the 1 half is over here, and the radical 3 over 2 is over here. Okay, this circle, I'm going to draw some lines on here. You don't need to draw them with me. Okay, what the unit circle is, imagine that you have a piece of graph paper. And so those would, that's what these red lines are that I drew in here. Let's say this is a piece of graph paper, and we zoomed way in on the piece of graph paper so that we now have these huge boxes of, of graph for our graph paper. And each of those boxes has a length of one. So... That's one thing we can start off with. Like I said, you don't have to fill in those lines that I just drew, but let's fill in this coordinate. If this coordinate over here is going to be the coordinate 1, 0, and up here is going to be 0, 1, 
and over here is negative 1, 0, and down here is 0, negative 1. So those are the coordinates of each of these because we are on a piece of graph paper. Now it doesn't ask for this one, but if it did, this would be 1, 1. But we don't need that because that's not on the circle. Look, our circle is way in here. Okay, so if this is 1, 1, then now our next question is, well, what is this one? Like, how do we find that point? Well, the way we find that is we use these little triangles that we cut out, or we just kind of manipulate in our head. We just imagine them. But let me show you what I mean. Okay, so here I have basically what you have. I have my little triangle cutouts. These two I wrote on the edges, so I know what they are. I'm going to move that one out of the way for now. I'm going to start with my 45, 45, 90, because just a second ago, we wanted to know what this coordinate is. Now, we actually want to know all of them, but just to start with, let's look at this coordinate. Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this triangle and I'm going to scoot it up there. And so I'm going to put my triangle, just like I talked about a second ago, the hypotenuse is on the radius, the leg is on the x-axis. That means the angle here, my 45 degree angle is here, and now I have this in place where I want it. So now I can see what these coordinates are. And it's radical 2 over 2, comma, radical 2 over 2. Because this is the x value. It's how far did I go in the x side? Well, I went radical 2 over 2 to get to here. And then I went up radical 2 over 2 to get to here. And so the coordinates of this one is radical 2 over 2. Let's stick with the 45s for now, and let's find out what the other 45s are. Okay, to do this, if you're using the triangles, get your triangles set up like this. And now we can easily see, I hope, that each of these coordinates is going to be a radical 2 over 2. It's just a matter of which ones are positive and which ones are negative. So let's take a minute to fill that in. Okay, so again, it's going to have the coordinates, radical 2 over 2, for both the x and the y, because those are the legs. However, in the x direction, that's going to be a negative. But in our y direction, that one's positive. And each of these along the way are going to be like that. We just have to figure out the signs. All right, well, here in the third quadrant, um, they're both negative, right? We went in the negative direction in the x and the negative direction in the y. So those are both negatives. Over here in the fourth quadrant, we went positive for our x, but we went negative for the y. So each of those 45, 45, 90s, each of the stops along the 45 degree stops are all going to be radical 2 over 2. You just have to think about when are they positive, when are they negative. Let's go to the 30 degrees. Okay, so we look at the 30, 30 degree spots. So I'm going to take these triangles, and I'm going to lay them out like this X pattern or this butterfly pattern, and I'm going to put them down, and I'm going to take a look at where is the coordinate. And so I can see from this point, here's my little triangle. My little triangle has the radical 3 over 2 going this way. So that's my x component. And my y coordinate is 1 half. And again, that will be the same numbers on all four of these. It's just which one's going to be the x, which one's going to be the y, which one's going to be positive, which one's going to be negative. So if we go to the second quadrant, we went negative radical 3 over 2 but then we went up one half. Let's look at the third and the fourth quadrant. Here we're going to go negative radical 3 over 2 again. We're also going negative one half here. And then over in the fourth quad quadrant, we went positive radical 3 over 2 and a negative one half. Finally, we're going to do the last of it with the other, the 60, 30, 90s, and put those in their spots. Okay, so now I've got the 60, 30, 90s. Again, notice my 60 degree is always at the origin, and the x-axis is what I'm always measuring back to. Basically, remember reference angles? We were trying to set these up, so in this case, the 60 degree is the reference angle. So I draw down, down to the x-axis, that's my reference angle. So now we're going to fill in the last of our coordinates with the missing numbers with these triangles. And so from this blue triangle, we can see we went over one half, we went up radical 3 over 2. And so once again, our other ones are just going to be figuring out which way do they go, and is it positive or negative. So in the second quadrant, we went negative 1 half, and we went up radical 3 over 2. 
Let's go down to quadrants three and four. And so in the third quadrant, we went negative one half and then down radical three over two. In the fourth quadrant, we went positive one half and then down radical three over two. And then the ones that are empty right now were the ones that we filled in a minute ago, but let's go ahead and fill those in with our ones and zeros. So over here we have a one zero, zero one, negative one zero, zero negative one. And now we have filled in the entire circle of all of those coordinates. And so at the beginning of this video we had no idea what those coordinates were. Now we know what they are and we know how to find them. For the last thing for these little triangles, it is up to you. Um, some people use these little triangles a lot because it helps them to remember what, what is what. And so if there's a question on a worksheet, they pull out their triangle and they put it on there and see. Um, also, if you would like to glue these down, you could glue these down to your paper plate or glue these down to this piece of paper. Um, and that way you have them and you can see what they're doing and where they're coming from. But those triangles are up to you. Other people don't like the triangles. They're frustrating. They can't figure out where to put them. So if the triangles are not working for you, that's all right too. But for some people, they are a helpful tool to find these little pieces. Okay, now that we know all of this, now we're ready to do some homework, some assignments on how to do the, what to do with these um, coordinates on the edges.